Oh, hi. If you thought two minutes was too long to prepare Maggi noodles, then let me show you a way of evaluating a stock in less than a minute. Here, let's have a look at the laptop. All right, so we can go here and on Piotrowski score, if you do nine, then we get a list of 160 plus companies and hopefully they are undervalued as well. Awesome, less than 30 seconds. But as quick this metric is, we'll take it a little slow in this video as we try to understand what the Piotrowski score really means. What are the variables that go into it? Does it really work in an Indian environment? And of course, how can we use it in our everyday investing lives? So let's start from the beginning and the Piotrowski score was developed by Joseph Piotrowski when he first wrote about it in a paper in the year 2000. There was the mention of an F score in that paper, which is also why this approach is sometimes called Piotrowski's F score. And to put it simply, it's a scoring mechanism that's used to assess the strength and financial health of a company. On its part, the formula is ridiculously simple and it gained prominence when Piotrowski himself generated upwards of 20% in ROI by backtesting the data and buying stocks as per his system. It's a very popular metric. It's not without its pros and cons. And I think an understanding of this F-score is an important tool in any investor's toolkit. If you like this video, then do give it a thumbs up as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to share it with your friends. Let's begin. Okay, so the Piotrowski score is like a report card of a company's financial health. And like any report card, it scores the company on a scale of 0 to 9. So essentially, a score of 7, 8 or 9 means the company is doing well financially and scores of 2, 1 and 0 are the strugglers. Now to calculate the score, Mr. Piotrowski uses 9 different criteria and if the numbers meet the requirements, then 1 point is awarded to the company per criteria. So it's a bit like the point system in Delhi schools, but without the subjectivity and heartburn that comes along with it. Now, the nine factors in Piotrowski's F-score can be further broken down into three major categories, which includes the ever-important profitability. Secondly, there's the crucial combination of leverage, liquidity and source of funds. And finally, we have operating efficiency. Let's start with profitability, which has the highest weightage amongst the categories and carries four out of the available nine points. The first variable here is net income and it should come as no surprise that companies that make money are more valuable as compared to the loss making ones. Now in many of my other videos we've used net income more as a metric so something like net profit margin or earnings per share or return on equity etc but the Piotrowski score keeps it super elementary by awarding one point as long as the company has made a profit. Ooh, say that again. Yeah, sure, man. So if the company makes even one rupee of profit, then you give it one point. Don't ask me why, but just as an example, since Coal India made a profit of 28,000 crores last year, it gets one point for successfully passing the first criteria. And if I were to run it as a query on screener, then it gives me a little over 3,200 companies who would have joined Coal India with a single point on the Piotrowski scorecard. The next variable is return on assets and a high ROA indicates an efficient use of assets to generate profits and vice versa. What's even better is if this ROA number increases over time and that's what the Piotrowski rules are looking for. In other words, a point is awarded to a company if the current year's ROA is higher than the previous year's ROA, which obviously indicates an improvement in asset utilization. I'll stick with Coal India here and it definitely deserves a point as there has been an improvement in ROA with this number going up from 10.2% to 14.4% for this current year. Now on a screener this is not difficult to figure out and when I punched in this query I received over 2000 entries that comply with this increasing ROA criteria. Next up is operating cash flow and simply said this number explains how well a company is managing its core business activities in terms of making money and paying for expenses. Now per the Piotrowski F score, a point is earned when the current year's operating cash flow is higher than the preceding year's cash flow from operations. For instance, in the case of Coal India, there's been an improvement in its operating cash flow which gives it one point, while companies like Maruti Suzuki, Asian Paints and Titan would have received zero points. Again, if you want to do this yourself in a standard screener, then compare last year's cash from operations with the preceding year's value. 
Piotrowski explains earnings quality on the basis of stability, that is the company's profits are not prone to sharp fluctuations, and also in terms of sustainability, wherein the earnings are generated from the core operations of the business and not from one-time gains or accounting manipulations. He specifically terms this variable as accruals, and what it simply says is that if a company's cash from operations is greater than its net income, excluding extraordinary items, then the company is displaying a superior quality of earnings and is therefore awarded one point. Obviously, if the modified net profits are lower than the cash from operations, then it means the earnings are not that reliable or maybe there is some manipulation which amounts to zero points. Like in the case of Coal India, the company received zero points in 2018, 19 and 20. But as the operational cash flow increased, the company did start scoring some points. Again, this formula can be easily replicated on a screener. And as far as Coal India and the profitability metrics are concerned, they've scored four on four this year. The fifth variable is leverage. And the idea here is to see how much of the assets are funded by long-term debt and the lower this number, the better it is. Essentially, if the long-term debt to total asset ratio, so if this number is lower in the current year as compared to the previous year, then it indicates a reduction in financial risk and therefore adds up to one additional point per the Piotrowski rules. Again, I'll stick to Coal India and one can see here that this ratio has gone up as compared to the previous year and consequently Coal India gets a zero for this particular metric. The current ratio of a company is calculated by dividing the current assets by the current liabilities and if this number is greater than one then it means the company is in a good position to cover its short-term financial obligations. On the contrary, if the number goes below one, then it definitely raises concerns about the company's liquidity position, and that's definitely not a good place to be in. Now, when I look at Coal India, a current ratio of 1.57 is definitely a good sign, but Joseph Piotrowski takes it a step further, and his scoring mechanism requires an improvement in the current ratio of the present year as compared to the previous one. When I apply this on Coal India, the company just misses out. And because the current year's number is lower than the preceding year, it gets zero for this. The seventh variable is a slightly strange one, and I haven't come across this in any other investing strategy. So according to Piotrowski, if a company issues new shares, then it is to be considered as a negative factor and no points will be given to it when calculating the F-score. Now I tried it on the screener and pleasantly a whole bunch of companies seem to be compliant on this variable. But the point to ponder is why was this labeled as a negative factor and in my view this might have to do with a either a dilution in ownership or a potential reduction in EPS or some financial challenge that the company is facing. I think Piotrowski's goal is to identify companies with strong fundamentals and somewhere he felt the presence of new share issuances might be suggesting financial instability or maybe it's the management's inability to generate sufficient funds internally. All right, we now come to the operational efficiency parameters and it starts with the gross margin. Understandably, higher is better and expectedly Piotrowski wants the current year number to be higher than the previous year. Of course, this was never going to be a problem for Coal India that has delivered its highest gross profit margin in years and it consequently receives one point for this. And the ninth and final variable is the asset turnover ratio, which is something we have discussed in a previous 10 bagger video. As a term, it simply explains if the company is good at using what it has to generate sales and earn profits. Now, I'm sure you've guessed it by now and per the Piotrowski formula, this ratio in the current year should exceed the previous year's number to be able to earn one point. Again, in the case of Coal India, we see an improvement in the asset turnover ratio and that gives the company an additional point in Mr. Joseph Piotrowski's F-score. So this concludes our nine variables and the F-score is a composite, a summation of these individual scores. Now in the case of Coal India, this research done by me and Kunal gives us an F-score of 7, with the only gaps being a relatively high leverage and a lowering of the current ratio. I should also point out that on screener.in, the Piotrowski score for Coal India is a lot higher at 9. On Trendline, it was a 7. Finbox and GuruFocus.com gave it only a 6, while Value Research Online calculated Coal India's F-score as an 8. 
So as I've seen it so many times, everyone seems to be using their own methodology, but it all starts with receiving the right information and the hard working folks at Fisdom Research are always at it. A must read for all serious investors is their monthly cap view and the August version beautifully compiles a number of macroeconomic indicators covering the GDP, balance of payment, capex, bank credit, monsoons and an additional 20 parameters. Everything you need to know about the equity markets in India and abroad, a special feature on what is driving India's economic growth, and even some sector-specific technical trends to help investors explore the ideal entry and exit points. The monthly cap view is one must-have publication for all investors, and you can subscribe to it or download the report on fisdom.com absolutely free of cost. As always, the link is available in this video's description. The next part of my inquisition was to understand how the Piotrowski score works in an Indian environment. For this, I explored the Nifty 200 set of companies, which yielded a grand total of just four companies with a top score of nine. Coal India, Varun Beverages, PI Industries and Oil India Limited. But that doesn't mean there aren't many fundamentally strong companies. In fact, there are a lot of them. And pleasantly, about 35% of the companies across market caps have an F score of 7, 8 or 9. My next inquiry was to understand how a set of high scoring companies would perform. And this is easier said than done because it requires some serious backtesting and none of the tools that I have support that. But thankfully, I did come across a July 2021 presentation by Aditya Birla Capital where they had presented a list of 28 companies which had a Piotrowski score of at least 7. So fortunately, I had something to work with and when I punched in the numbers, the returns I received from this portfolio over the next two years were pretty much what the Nifty 50 had also delivered. In fact, I tried a couple more techniques we had recently learnt on my channel. For example, the loser's portfolio and even there the returns came to only 12.2% which is just par for the course. So somewhere I think this scoring system is missing some crucial elements. The most important of all being the valuations, that is the price at which a fundamentally strong company is a strong buy or a strong sell. This was a lingering thought in my head and that's when I came upon this research done by some folks from Bits Pilani where they presented a modified Piotrowski score with the objective of receiving a higher return on investment. In the process, the team knocked off a couple of variables, the ROA and the operating cash flow. So point 0.2 and point 0.3 from the original list were removed and correspondingly they then introduced four additional variables which includes the price earning multiple, the P ratio, they also brought in the price to book value ratio, then the enterprise value upon EBITDA and lastly their modified F score also included any incremental changes in the firm's free cash flow. So as I said earlier, the original nine parameters by Joseph Piotrowski are purely based on company financials and were not market driven. But by having metrics like the P ratio, the PB ratio and the EV on EBITDA, a clear attempt is being made here to also identify undervalued companies from a list of fundamentally strong ones. In addition to these revised 11 variables, the research team also used a couple of technical indicators, namely the moving average crossover which helps us identify an uptrend and therefore which stocks to buy. And they also use the average directional movement index which is used to gauge the strength of that trend. You can read more about it in the paper, but just to cut this long story short, the back testing of this modified 13 variable approach led us to some amazing results with a significant jump in analyzed returns and the sharp ratio, which probably means this approach is worth our consideration and probably why I have put together a list of companies on the screener with whatever inputs I could manage. It's not perfect and nothing is perfect, so I'll encourage you to modify and improve the same. But my point is, the Piotrowski score is there for a reason and by focusing on factors such as profitability, leverage, liquidity and operating efficiency, it aims to provide investors with a systematic approach to evaluate and differentiate between promising and risky investment opportunities. It's not foolproof, the numbers are too dynamic and what is a score of 9 can very easily be 5 in the very next year but I think some parts of the system can definitely improve our chances of picking the right set of companies. I sincerely hope you found this video useful and informative. Do press the like button, do share this video with your friends and I'll see you 3 days from now. Until then.